Okay, again, good morning, and thank you, Dr. Atul. I am going to discuss with you the latest invasive fungal infection epidemiology and unmet need in case of Asia. These are my disclosures. I would say that out of the four disciplines in the field of microbiology, concern about fungal disease is of recent origin. Since 1980s, when we do have AIDS came into, we recognized it. We see more transplantation, immune suppression. But within short period of time, you know, that it caused a formidable challenge because of high number of cases and high mortality. But most of the administrators, doctors, they were not aware. Though the journals look at this nature microbiology, in 2017, they cautioned that 300 million people suffer from serious fungal disease. And 1.6 million people die every year, which is no less than tuberculosis or malaria. We pay so much attention in case of tuberculosis in malaria, but hardly any attention in case of the fungal disease. Even the National Geographic last year mentioned humans are not prepared for the pandemic caused by fungi. And that came very true about this COVID-associated mucormycosis, which happened in India. It's unimaginable that within one and a half months, we had more than 50,000 cases. And in the website, it mentions that possibly we have more number of cases than that. There is another issue is the candida oris. Yesterday also I mentioned about candida oris. I would say that this is one fungus which is behaving like bacteria. We never knew that fungi develop resistance so fast. It's a mutation, slowly, slowly, over years, it develops mutation, a resistance. But here, within no time, it develops resistance, easily transmitted, multiple outbreaks have been reported, cause severe infection. Just imagine the mortality, very high mortality. It's a resilient pathogen, very difficult by disinfectant to clear this fungus. Anyone getting colonized to get out of it is very difficult. It contaminates the environment. And most or most difficult of it, that is not easily identified. I have shown this slide also yesterday that first it started from Japan and Korea, but in Asia it had affected 15 countries, and in case of the Southeast Asia, 10 countries. And if you see that we never paid so much attention till something is recognized by USA. They are the big brother. They said that in CDC, when mentioned that this is under the severe, this is under the urgent threat category, then everybody have woke up. We, the scientists, tried to make them woke up, but they didn't pay attention until the CDC had put it in urgent threat category. And you see that, as I mentioned yesterday also, there are four clades genetically. And these clades, each other, are completely distinct. There is so much variation. And we do see in South Asia, it is the clade one. Of course, in case of Japan, Korea, I am not very sure about the Taiwan, whether it is the clade two, which is being there in case of East Asia. Clade 3 is in South Africa, and clade 4 in case of South America. And possibly there is another clade, clade 5 in case of Iran. USA, UK, they have got mixed clade. Basically, it is because of the migration of the population. And what is important, if you see in clade 1, which we generally in South Asia see, high drug resistance. It's resistant to fluconazole, resistant to vodiconazole, even amphotericin B30% resistant. And even the kinokandin resistance has started coming up up to 10% in that scenario. So this is the outbreak scenario. Now, coming in, in case of the epidemiology, we see there is a gross change happen. The change happened in the three components of epidemiology in case of this uh, host, fungus, and environment. In case of fungus, the major change, what it happened is that, you know, there are one point Five million fungi are there possibly, and only around 200 fungal species cause human disease. The main reason is 
fungi thrive at a low temperature. Human body temperature is 37. So there is a temperature restriction between the fungus to cause infection in human body. But global warming is making the fungi adopted to the higher temperature. That's why we are seeing so many new fungus which are producing this infection. In case of the host, there is not only the immunosuppressed patient. We are seeing now the ICU stays, COPD, liver or renal disease. Yesterday you have seen the cases like in cirrhosis, there is the fungal disease, the invasive aspergillosis which had been shown. We are also seeing there is a change in case of the environment. You know, I have not seen any hospital where there is no construction going on at any time. Every time there is some construction going on. And we compromise in case of not covering the construction area from the patient area. And because of this, there is always very high spore count. Especially in low middle income country, the spore count is very high. All these threats challenge our ability especially in case of the Asian region, to rapidly recognize, diagnose, and treat invasive fungal disease. I'm giving some of the bird's eye view in case of the, what is the magnitude of the problem. Look at this. These are the international data, especially from the Western world, where in case of the hematologic malignancy, it had been shown that AML, ALL, these are the, our hematologic stem cell transplant, where the cases are very high in number. What is the percentage? around 10% infection which have been reported. But just see, in case of India, this is a multicenter study. In case of hematologic group in AML, it shows that there are only 34% proven and probable fungal infection. That means nearly four times which is the infection is there. This at our center at PGI Chandigarh, where we have shown compared to the uh, Pagano's data, especially in case of the Italy, we have nearly three times infection rate of invasive fungal disease. What is the reason? Reason is we are continuing treating the AML patient in non hepa filtered room. Because of that, spore count is very high. We are also seeing there is a breakthrough infection which is coming up. And this breakthrough infection is coming up because of the now more lactic prophylaxis which we are giving. This mold active prophylaxis bringing out mucormycosis, sclerosporiosis, fuseriosis, then lamentosporiosis. These are the other infections which are coming up in that season. Yesterday also I have mentioned that there is problem in case of not only in the community outbreak, nosocomial outbreak. You see in case of the aspergillus, there were 53 outbreaks in 458 patients. And here, what it had been shown that mortality is very high, nearly 60%. And here, especially aspergillus fumigators and aspergillus flavors in case of Asian country, which are important. I've also mentioned yesterday, this is about the tuberculosis. Post-tuberculosis, chronic pulmonary aspergillosis is a big issue. You can see out of the seven countries which have got the highest incidence, six are in the Asian country. We have TB. And here, the TB patients, when they are treated, going home, they, after treatment, they are very well. But suddenly, after six months, they develop fever, flank pain, or they have got something of hematomatosis or hemoptosis, which is there. And suddenly, you start thinking that possibly it's a resistant tuberculosis, or it's a new, fun a new tuberculosis which are there. But never think about that there might be small cavity which is colonized by the aspergillus. And that should be picked up very quickly. That's very important. And simple antibody test can pick up these cases. Besides this, as I mentioned, the host factor has changed. There is now another issue is coming up. We are using plenty of monoclonals. We are using checkpoint inhibitors in case of the cancer patients. And these are bringing up the fungal infections. That is also very important. So these are the new risk groups which are coming up. Yesterday, you have seen the case of the invasive aspergillosis in cirrhosis. We did a meta-analysis. We found that in 38 studies, very high incidence of invasive fungal disease in case of aspergillosis and in sometimes in case of, like in India, mucormycosis, which is there. 
In our COPD or bronchitis is present, it had been seen fungal infection even up to 1.3 to 4 percent in that sense. Cystic fibrosis, another issue where the fungal infection which is coming up. Now, ICU patient this is very important. Now, uh, this group which is coming up. Earlier, we used to know that this is in case of the immunosuppressed patient which had come up. But then, there is two important things had come up, especially the virus-associated fungal disease, especially in case of the pulmonary aspergillosis. You can see these two terms, IAPA and CAPA, had come up. Influenza-associated pulmonary aspergillosis and COVID-associated pulmonary aspergillosis. I'm not going to discuss the COVID just now. COVID I will be taking up in the afternoon session where I will discuss about the COVID-associated fungal disease. But what is happening? You know, virus is already damaging respiratory epithelium. Then it enters the macrophages. And then there is a cytokine storm which brings a lot of those inflammatory cells, mainly macrophages and your neutrophils coming to that picture. But when associated fungus come, there is already macrophage is damaged, the cells are not available, then there is the invasion which happens. And if you see in case of influenza, it had been seen up to 10% of the cases which have been there. Tracheobronchitis, which have been shown to be even up to 55%, which has been there. And this is very important. If you see this particular study, it shows that in case of this, in tracheobronchial aspergillosis, what happened that despite identifying them quickly, if you see that there is almost, you can see that 90% death which have been there. This particular study shows this situation. We are seeing some rare yeast outbreak. Here the importance of rare yeast is that if you see everywhere, it is said that we should not use Echinocandine, which is the recommended drug in case of the yeast. Rather, you use liposomal amputation B, which have been recommended. Similarly, rare molds. I have yesterday also mentioned about Sclerosporium, Lamentosporium, Fusariosis. These are all new things which are coming up. This very interesting data, which had come from the China, COVID-19 deficiency linked with many fungal infections. Initially, we used to know that superficial or mucocutinous infection is associated with it. Now we come to know every invasive fungal disease is possibly also associated with CARD-9 deficiency. Then we are learning much more in case of microbiome, in case of the gut. You know, GI tract contains 66 fungal genera and 184 fungal species. And diet is a major factor in case when you are vegetarian, more chance of getting more candida infection is there. If you are non-vegetarian, there is less chance of having candida in this scenario. So what is happening, there is this biosis in the gut. There is flora which changes. Now whether the inflammatory bowel disease causing this biosis or this biosis causes inflammatory bowel disease, we are not very sure. So there is, compared to non-inflamed intestinal mucosa, we see abundance diversity of fungi significantly increased in this inflamed mucosa. And when it had been tried to look into all these conditions, from Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and even in case of the dextran, sulfate, sodium, induced colitis, you can see everywhere that fungal infection is possibly an important role which have been there. Next important issue is coming up the resistance. Already I mentioned of Candida auris, but now in case of even albicans and tropicalis, we are seeing resistance. This is the China study which had shown there is an increase of resistance in tropicalis going even up to 42%, including the susceptible dose-dependent group. As for Gilles, as all resistance, this is the main issue in case of the Europe where it had shown that even up to 30% resistance especially associated with the fungicide. Somehow, in case of the Asian country and other countries, still not so high, but we need to be careful. So now, in case of the antifungal resistance, we have to say it's a one health driver that has become important. 
This is a very good data from the UK Mycology Reference Laboratory, which had shown that if you compare the 2006 to 16, comparing to this 2019 to 20, see the difference in case of the resistance which has come up. The difference in resistance, you can see, this has gone from 2.7 to 26.3, or in case of the itraconazole, voriconazole, posaconazole, even isabuconazole, which is a new drug, where even 28.6% resistance had been shown. Somehow, amphotericin B resistance had not been shown, but I would say that in case of amphotericin B, uh, in case of aspergillus terius, aspergillus flavors, where there is more resistance come up. There is change in case of the aspergillus species with the use of more mold active prophylaxis, which have been there. And this, if you see among the cryptic species, like suppose in case of aspergillus fumigators, there are now 33 genera and 45 species which have been detected. And here, like aspergillus lentulus, which is drug resistant, and aspergillus lentulus, if it is identified, you have to consider not to give amphotericin B. In case of crypto, even their fluconazole resistance has come up. So friends, if I have to sum up in this scenario, I would say that in case of Asia, high burden is there, limited awareness is there, low resource allocation, public health response is still poor, we have local epidemiology which is not very clearly known, limited diagnosis and antifungal drug which all are creating problem. You know, in case of this antifungal, all drugs are not available in low middle income country, in Asian country as well. Even when a new drug is being approved by FDA to reach any country in case of Asia, it takes almost minimum five years. Recently, I heard this uh, in Vietnam, anidula fungin had reached. So you imagine anidula fungin when it had been discovered, now it is only being approved in case of Vietnam. So in Asian country, this is a big challenge. We did a study in case of our Asian country amongst the laboratory, and we found that all the non-culture diagnostics are available in very limited center. There's a very good study from China in nationally covering multiple centers. It had shown that the multi-top or DNA sequencing are present in very few centers. We did another study from Asian Fungal Working Group that's very important amongst the clinician which had shown that 63% uh, people had no formal training in case of fungal infection. And all the different test availability is a big issue. And when we asked the clinician why you cannot prescribe the desired drug, 80% said that patient could not afford, that's a big issue. Yesterday also I mentioned that we don't use liposomal amputation B, we use conventional amputation B, Though many people say you cannot use it, it costs so much of toxicity. But we cannot afford it. And as I mentioned yesterday also, Dr. Atul's study had shown that 25% patient in case of the, uh, in case 25% patient could not afford and complete the therapy. So friends, what we are now seeing is that in case of fungal priority pathogen, which have been released by WHO, there are 19 uh, agents which have been classified. And that has shown that there is increased awareness which had come. And here we can see that though there are agents, but where is aspergillus flavors, which is so common? After this, like suppose from Africa, one of my friends asked me, uh, you are in that committee, you were in that committee, but you have not included aspergillus flavors. Yes, we don't see aspergillus fumigators, we see aspergillus flavors. I said, please develop or publish paper on this issue. Without publication, it's a big problem, you cannot put it. So, major knowledge gap is there, and in case of WHO, they are encouraging to do in case of this type of a study. So if you see there is the problem, WHO recommends now strengthening of laboratory capacity, public health intervention, and investment in research. Especially you develop 
reference laboratory, which is very important. At least one central mycology reference laboratory at each country is very important. We can develop the disease registry. That's also very important. That would help us in a surveillance network in case of this fungal disease. In case of the uh, research, innovative antifungal and innovative diagnostics is very important, which we need to go ahead with it. So, Luckily, in case of the fungi, now there are few antifungals which are in the pipeline. At least one drug, that is the Ivex fungrave, has already been recommended by FDA in case of the mucocutinous candidiasis. And more drugs are in this way. I feel that it would be come out very soon. Like Rezafuzin, one of the uh, echinocandine, you can give only once in a week. And you can see this phosphomanogepics. This is one of the drugs which is very important. It can even be work in case of this sclerosporium and in case of fusarium. Finally, we have to integrate with the public health. That's very important because fungi is still not included in public health. That is very important. So friends, I would say that in my summary slide that unmet need in Asia and food for thought is that we need local epidemiology study. We need training of the clinician and laboratory personnel. We need to have association of fungal disease with the existing communicable disease program. Like in case of tuberculosis control program, you can add the chronic pulmonary aspergillosis. That would help in that scenario. Improving the infection control program, advocacy it required in case of your country, for essential diagnostic and antifungal drug waste and integration with public health. Developing and incorporating the point of care tests like lateral flow assay, which had come up in three disease. I hope very soon in other diseases it would come up. And then management guideline, we have to develop specific Asia-specific management guideline. Whenever we say we speak about IDSA guideline, but the IDSA guideline may be ideal in that scenario we have different epidemiology. We have a problem restriction. Suppose it had been asked to do beta-glucan tests, but you don't have beta-glucan tests. What you can do? Can we have something else to be done? So those type of management guidelines, which is important. I would request all of you start doing antifungal stewardship. It had been shown that if I can do diagnostic stewardship, the cost of management can come down. There will be one conference just next month in case of uh, India. That is a MycoCon 2023. Some of you, if you can attend this conference. Thank you for your kind attention.